Hi, and welcome to this section of Space Claims Basic Training. Today we're going to be talking about the Fill Tool. The Fill Tool will simplify geometry and remove different faces and features. Let's get started by looking at some basic operations with Fill. Now Fill is object action or action object oriented, which means if I select on a object or a face first and then hit Fill, I can remove that. Alternatively, I can hit the fill button first, and I can grab a face, and I need to grab another one. I need to grab the perimeter of the circle, so I'm going to hold down control and grab that second surface and then hit the green check, and that will be that's deleted. The way fill works is that it deletes surfaces and replaces them with nearby geometry. Now let's try this on another cutout. I'm going to exit the fill command and, and enable select. Now I want to get rid of all four of these slots in the model. So here's a refresher on how we might use some of the selection tools. If I double click on one of the faces um, inside the slot, I get all four of them. Now I need to grab all the faces of the other four slots, so let's use the power select. A couple things I need to grab in here. Uh, let's grab the equal radius cylinders along with all the faces that are of the same area. Now I have all four slots selected and when I hit fill it's going to delete them and it's going to use the top and bottom faces and extend those to cover up that region. So that's how we would use the fill tool on holes. Uh, it also works just as well on protrusions and depressions. Uh, this small protrusion coming up from uh, this depression if I were to box select the entire thing and hit fill, I'm going to get rid of all five of those surfaces and the system will use this bottom surface as a basis for covering up that missing region. Now let's go over to uh, the one on the right. If I were to click on the top surface and then hit fill, nothing's going to happen because the system doesn't know how to replace uh, just that top face. I would need to select the top as well as the side. Now again it can use this bottom face as a basis for getting rid of those two faces. So let's go back to the one on the left. Uh, the fill tool works great with rounds as well, not just protrusions, depressions, and holes, um, but if I click on a round what it will do is take the horizontal surface and this vertical one and extend the two until they meet. If I hit fill now I've got a, a sharp edge. I can double click on a chain of rounds and hit fill to get rid of all of those instantly. Now I've got uh, one giant depression just by box selecting that entire region. I hit fill and they're gone. Uh, let's do the same thing but on the back side. I have some text uh, that's been engraved into this model. As we zoom in you can see that the text is uh, it's not actually engraved, but it is a protrusion uh, on the side cylinder. Again, just by box selecting all of this, I'm grabbing all those faces I don't want. When I hit fill, it's using this outer surface of the cylinder as a basis for replacing all those faces. So we looked at how we might use fill on rounds, depressions, holes, and protrusions. Let's talk about some edges. Uh, if we go to some of the some of the protrusions on the back, uh, this surface should really be one surface, but it's split up into three. So you might think that if I click on the middle one and hit fill, it's going to get rid of that region and combine the other two together. But that doesn't actually occur. Uh, what the system does is it uses the topmost portion of the cylinder, the upper quadrant, if you will and the two side walls of this protrusion as a basis for extending uh, that entire surface that we tried to fill. Now let's undo that. Uh, if we go to the quick access toolbar and hit undo, uh, that'll accomplish it. Also we can use control Z on our keyboard to undo that operation. Now the way to get rid of that middle surface would actually be to fill in uh, the edges that create it. I could do them one at a time, but I'm going to hold down control and grab both edges and then I'll hit fill. So when the edges are gone I'm left with just one surface. Now let's do something similar but on the back side of this model. Um, I have some sketches that were used 
or some sketches were used to create some regions um, on the surface that I don't want anymore. I want just the circular region. So I can grab any of these lines and when I hit fill they're gone and that surface is extended uh, to get rid of those regions. I can do the same thing on the outside of the triangle. I could have done all five lines at once if I wanted to, but I just chose to break it up into two. Let's take a look at how we can use fill on some more complicated regions of a model. Namely, an area where I have multiple rounds converging into one, it can be very complicated. When I try to use fill to automatically get rid of these, the system doesn't quite know how to extend faces and get rid of them. So the system will actually take a while to try to get rid of this and it will error out. So I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to show you a subset of the fill tool and it's under the prepare tab under remove and it's dedicated for removing rounds. Now two things with this. As I, as I have the button initiated, when I move around the model only rounds are selectable. Any other faces I cannot select. The second thing is that when I do hover over the edge of a round, you're going to see two pink lines form. Now what this is going to do, if I were to click right now, it would delete the center portion of this round. Now let's take a look at an option on the left hand side and it's called cap width and it's set to 60 percent. What this means is if I were to click right now, 60 percent of the entire length of this round would be deleted. I would cut out the center and the two ends would be left. To demonstrate uh, this a little bit further, let's type in 15% instead. Now I've got a much smaller region that I would be deleting and the ends would, would remain, about 85% total. Let's turn that back to 60, the default. The advantage of this and what this does is it allows me to break up rounds into more simpler regions so that the system can work on different parts at different times. Um, instead of trying to remove all the rounds at once, I'm just doing them selectively. Now, I'm in this dedicated rounds tool, keep in mind, so anything I box select, it's only going to grab rounds and get rid of them. When I hit the green check, um, it's much easier now for the system to be able to uh, get rid of these uh, individual sections and try to do it, instead of trying to do them all at once. Now, when I grab the last one on the back side, you'll see that this one errors out and we've got another problem where all these rounds are converging. So let's use the tool again. We're going to break this round up into multiple sections. And now I'll box select that corner. I should be able to get rid of that no problem. And then I can individually grab uh, these other regions. So let's look at one more way uh, that we can use uh, the fill tool in some uh, advanced operations. I'm going to go back to the design tab and I have a cutout that runs uh, on the top of of that surface and it goes all the way through um, into the cylinder. Now if I want to get rid of that entire cutout it might seem like the easiest way to do it would be to box select it and hit fill and it should disappear. Um, but it can't. The system doesn't quite know how to extend the faces in order to get rid of that, and it's because this bottom surface is the problem. So what we need to do is use one of the intersect tools to create a surface on the bottom, namely four surfaces now that the system can remove all at once. And the way we're going to do this is using the split face command. The split face command will take a given face and it will break it up into certain uh, strategic sections, if you will. So let's look at this command. I'm going to go to split face now I'm prompted to select the face that I want to split and I, and I want to split up this face into two regions. Now there's four different ways that I can split up a face. The first is by uh, UV points so it's going to draw somewhat of a Cartesian looking um, system. If I were to put this on a cylinder uh, it would project those, those two uh, crosshairs as well. I can use a perpendicular line so any point at any point where I am it's going to draw a line that's normal to the curvature uh, of that particular edge or I can grab two distinct points uh, to create the split surface or I can use one of the elements, another face on my body um, as a basis for cutting it up. Now notice as I hover over the cylinder I get the pink line that extends down to the surface 
that I want to split and that's exactly what I want so we'll go ahead and do that. Now I have this surface that's been broken up into two separate faces now. Now I should be able to box select that entire region I want to get rid of so I'm getting rid of those four faces when I hit fill they're instantly gone. So I hope you've been able to learn how you can use uh, the fill tool to defeature geometry whether you have protrusions or depressions, cutouts or rounds of any type. Thank you very much for watching.